Our next speaker is a first year MBA student right here at Ross with a passion to encourage people to think beyond their own experiences. Please welcome Vanessa Sherris. Many of us neglectfully operate under the illusion that our beloved social systems are fair and just. But that's not the case. My hope is that after these next five minutes, you will look at our judicial system more critically and advocate for change. So what is the role of our courts? They determine who is a criminal. They're supposed to protect minorities. But the definition I would like to focus on is to the left. They should embody equal treatment and fair play. But are they doing this? We will explore this question by looking at a scenario with two different men. First, meet John. At the time, he was a senior at the University of Michigan. Both his parents graduated from here, the medical school. They own their own home and they're practicing in Chicago. He grew up high income. And now meet Greg. He was also a senior at the time. He was an economics major. He grew up in a low income community. His parents live out in Newark. In two unrelated situations, they're both arrested for theft. What happens? So I want to make it clear that as I'm walking through their experiences, this is the most frequently occurring scenario, not what will happen 100% of the time. So at the most basic level, what should happen is after they're arrested, they get booked, there may or may not be bail, they have to prepare for court, and there might possibly be a hearing. But according to the ABA definition, each step of this process should be fair and equal, but is it? Because of the money value of both the bail and the court preparation process, John has a huge advantage. So in actuality, what will happen is that when John gets arrested, he will be able to post his bail, he'll be able to afford a lawyer, and then he'll return to court well-groomed and prepared with a highly qualified lawyer arguing on his behalf as opposed to Greg, who can't afford bail, so he'll be arrested and jailed, although presumed innocent. He won't be able to afford a lawyer, so he gets assigned a public defender. He returns to court unprepared and unkept with a lawyer with little incentive to prepare a proper case. And so, do they have an equal chance of being acquitted of the same crime? They don't. Because of John's financial circumstances, more than likely he will be acquitted while Greg will be jailed. And the problem here is where money plays a role in these systems. So in both our cash for bail system and when they get assigned an attorney. And so what we need to focus on is how can we eliminate these processes where money plays a role. So first, let's look at bail. The issue with bail is that it disproportionately impacts low-income communities. They cannot post the 10%, and then they're jailed even though they're presumed innocent. And at worst, when Greg comes back, he looks like this, handcuffed, and when John returns back to court, he appears like this. I want you to think about the power of perception and what the jury might perceive and how that might shape their image of both these individuals. The issue with the public defender system is that they're overburdened. We have hundreds of public defenders working extremely hard, but they have high caseloads and they don't always have access to all the resources they need to plead a proper case. In addition to that, a lot of them with little incentive, they encourage their defendants to take plea deals that guarantee minimum sentences and or felonies. So we need to change this system. I would also be remiss if I did not mention the role of race in the courts. And so as you can see from the graph, although African Americans only represent 12% of the U.S. population, their pre-detention rate is significantly higher than their white counterparts. And so although in my scenario I depicted Greg and John as both African American, statistically speaking, Greg would most likely be black or Hispanic, and John would most likely be white. So what are the resolutions? First, we need to eliminate the money for bail system. Instead of using cash, we need to conduct valid risk assessments for qualities, rational measures of whether or not they would reoccur the crime or if they would flee. 
and the public defender system. We need to make it easier for them to do their jobs. Make sure that we're limiting the number of cases that they can take, that they have a competitive compensation package, and access to all the resources that they need. So as citizens who demand a free, just, and equitable society, we should demand the same of every social system established to serve. Under the law, both Greg and John should be equal. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa.